my kids are out for the summer, so I no longer have access to film at my office desk. So we have the squeaky chair in the corner of the bedroom set up today. Hi, I'm Sean. I have been a children's director, pastor, minister, whatever label you wanna give me for the past 13, well, 15 years, but 13 years experience in churches. Today we're gonna to talk about sacred cows, which I have previously mentioned before. I'm in a Facebook group called Things They Didn't Teach Us in Seminary. <laughs> and someone had a fantastic post. We should discuss it. We should discuss sacred cows. First, what is a sacred cow? A sacred cow is something in the church that if you are new, you are not allowed to touch, move, or if it's, it could be a person too, not allowed to uh, disagree with them, but typically it's an object or a place or a room, <laughs> could be a pew, could be a piece of furniture. In this post, it is a kitchen, which I feel like that's pretty typical in churches, is there's always a group that feels the kitchen is more theirs than anybody else's, but I have been in churches where that's not the case. This is a conversation, so let me know your thoughts down below. Do you have a sacred cow in your church, and what is it? And being in children's ministry, if you're starting a new job, or sometimes even if you've been there a while, you will not know what the sacred cow is until you step in it. And then everybody will tell you you stepped on the sacred cow. You push the sacred cow over, you let it roll down a hill, it's mooing at the bottom of the hill, and it's not yours, it's not your cow. You will feel frustration. I have felt frustrated. But sometimes I've seen other people come up, bump up against that sacred cow that's not in my area and I have seen their frustration. Let's read this little post. Let's discuss. Y'all, <laughs> this person must be Southern. What do you do about mem members that have ownership over some aspect of the church's ministry? We have one person who will not let anyone else make coffee because no one else knows how. Someone new was going to serve at our community dinner and one of the people who has crazy ownership over it, who wasn't in town, went to tell someone else that this new person could not serve spaghetti because she didn't know how. These are folks who have children who are older than me and so there's the when you get older you will understand kind of dynamic too. How do you deal with this? Because it certainly doesn't encourage active engagement from the congregation. How do you deal with this? Ownership over the kitchen, ownership over the coffee maker, ownership over the pots and pans. As a children's person, there's been many, a children's director, many times I have gone, you know, needed to fix things in the kitchen for the kids. And if you're don't, not careful and you don't put things up exactly where they belong, then people complain about you. You know, stuff goes missing in a communal space and I don't have the answers. I don't know what the answer is to sharing a communal space except forgiveness, uh, leave things the best that you can the way you found it. I mean, we can't always remember if we're in a hurry and we grab a pot holder or a spoon and we, we wash the dishes afterwards. Being new in the kitchen, you may not know where those utensils go. Now, I've also heard of churches who have like a, a map and a list of where things go. I've also heard, you know, cabinets labeling. I think that helps if you label things so that people know where stuff belongs. Uh, but I think the real issue here is what are the effects when one person feels they have ownership over a communal space? How does that affect ministry areas? Does having a sacred cow have positive or negative impact on a community of believers. In this situation, you know, a coffee pot, you know, the easiest solution I would think of is to ask the person to train somebody else on the coffee pot. I worked in a church where someone had ownership over a kitchen and they had been there for years and years and it was someone who was very aggressive to not just to me, but everyone. So the person herself was a little bit of a sacred cow and the kitchen was her area. So when it came time for vacation Bible school or any events that involved the kitchen, I made sure she she didn't she did not volunteer in children's ministry except if I asked her to do the kitchen for vacation Bible school. If she would be in charge of the snacks or if she if we were doing an event, I would ask her, "Hey, 
where can I put such and such in the kitchen? I tried to work around it, you know, because I didn't want to start conflict because it wasn't someone in my area and it wasn't a volunteer, like a major volunteer of mine. And I was new. I didn't feel like I could sit down with that person. I feel like that was like a, a senior pastor moment <laughs> that needed to happen, a conversation that needed to happen. But the senior pastor wasn't having that conversation either because this woman was a force. What would you suggest this person do? I was reading some of the comments below it and I can't find the post again, so I can't remember all of them. But someone suggested that they ask that person to train other people on how to use the coffee machine. And then I think the person responded back that they had asked that of the person and she told them no, that she would not train anyone else. <laughs> Very toxic right? Toxic ownership in the church. You know, if you have new volunteers or new people in the church and they are witness to any of this toxic ownership over the coffee maker in the church, what does that say about the entire church? What does it say about Christ? Um, I know probably the toxic person doesn't think that their behavior reflects Christ, but it certainly does. What are your thoughts?